When John Moses Browning knew the United States would enter World War I, he took two designs with him to the United States Ordnance Department. One was the Browning automatic rifle, and the other was the 1917 belt-fed machine gun. John Browning outdid himself. He had monkeyed around with gas operation in the model 1895 and later the, became the, what, the model 1914, the potato digger. And even John Browning realized that uh, he needed a quantum leap. And so he went back to recoil operation. And undoubtedly by then he had thoroughly examined Maxim guns, didn't like what he saw, and said, I can make it simpler stronger, fewer parts, bigger parts, and therefore stronger parts, and even more reliable. And so that is what he set out to do with the Model 1917. The time for this firearm would actually come during the great crisis of the Second World War. It would continue to serve the American military in the interwar period. During this interwar period, the Browning water-cooled machine gun would ultimately reach a point where it has a service life extension by taking existing stocks of 1917 spare parts and using them in the 1930s to begin assembling new M1917, now designated the M1917A1 machine gun. With just a few minor differences from the predecessor M1917 machine gun, the M1917A1 would soldier on into the Second World War. The 1917A1 continued to serve uh, throughout the interwar years and then, of course, during World War II. Uh, it was the principal 30 caliber water-cooled machine gun of, of the U.S. Army and, of course, the U.S. Marine Corps. When Browning first brought that gun to the attention of the United States military, he made claims for it that everyone thought, the, the, the Ordnance Department thought, were preposterous. Nobody could make a gun like that. Browning did. It served famously among Marine infantry regiments, for example, during the latter months of 1942 on the island of Guadalcanal. In fact, there are two incredibly famous Medal of Honor actions relating to M1917A1 water-cooled machine guns on Guadalcanal in October of 1942 from two different Marines in the 7th Marine Regiment, Marines by the name of John Bassalone and Mitchell Page both earned the Medal of Honor as machine gun section leaders operating the Browning M1917A1 water-cooled machine gun. As long as there's ammunition, as long as there is water, because uh, the water will boil off after a while and can be captured and, and recaptured uh, and, and you know, condensed and put back into the gun, um, the guns will, will literally burn out the barrels from erosion before they'll break. Most important thing about the 1917A1 Browning is its longevity. I mean, here it's invented in 1917. It sees great service at the end of World War I, which was the critical time when the Americans really played the role that they needed to ensure victory for the Allies. It maintained the Marine Corps throughout the 20s and 30s in the Banana Wars. And in World War II, that was the mainstay of the American forces uh, for heavy machine guns. Goes into Korea, the same. And, you know, it's still being used into the early 1960s as training. And that's a pretty long life for any gun. It demonstrates uh, the genius of, of the conception. In keeping with U.S. military doctrine, the rate of fire is not high. Uh, German veterans always have told me that they could always tell whether they were facing a Browning or one of their own guns. They learned the music after a while. 